you on the show. Mm -hmm. uh, before we get to dive into our discussions and uh, our interviews, that is, we always mm -hmm. get a kickstart the show with uh, some freestyles. You oh, wow. demonstrating, <laughs> you demonstrating no uh, way. What, 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 what you always do behind the mic in a mm -hmm. studio. So that's what we want to do, or what you, we want you mm -hmm. to do in the meantime. If you can do something for us, uh, I, I, for 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 this jam, boy, you got to know. Oh, for boy, you got to know. Yeah, <laughs> you guys, you guys, you're yeah. supposed to be like paying me for this. <laughs> like, uh, uh, <laughs> how, how much do you want? No, but you are eh? a fan. Okay. So this is like for my fans. All right. Anything for my fans. Uh, nice. So, one, two, three. Let's go. Boy, you got to know. I think you ought to know what you're worth. You don't even stand a chance on me. So it's just time for you to leave. Boy, you, got to know. <laughs> you should have done the harmonies, the ad libs. Okay, I wanted to do the, the part which was done by the main tongue guy. What's uh -huh. got to know? Oh, th that part. Well, you know. It was Fortune that did that part. Is it? Um, yes. Okay. With Tongai, he mm -hmm. was just the video guy. All right. Yes. So he lip synced on the video. Okay. Uh -huh. But I, those vocals were actually Fortune and Pirates. Is it? Voice. I thought it was uh, the man Tongai. No way. No way. <laughs> it's you're not the only one. Hey, a lot of people actually think that was him. That was Tongai. Uh -huh. I think that what made people very interested uh -huh. in the whole concept of the video and in him being the, the main guy okay. for the video. Alright, uh, nice. So, welcome to the Paul FM Studios. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, nice. Uh, if you can tell us, where, where have you been? Mm -hmm. where, where are you coming from? Mm -hmm. I used to stay right here in the country or maybe mm -hmm. coming from the state side from the UK. <laughs> <laughs> I would want to know. Okay. I'm... An African girl, I love the motherland. So I'm not coming from overseas. I'm coming from Africa. I'm I'm in Zimbabwe at the moment. Okay. Um, because there are like some charity projects that I'm working on. I'm very passionate about working with kids, All right. um, especially in the educational um, sector. All right. So I've got my own um, foundation called I Rise Education Foundation. All right. So that's basically what I've been working on. And and recording as well there are like um some producers that um i've really liked their work and wanted to work with them so i've been recording as well okay yes all right uh, so why the name tia why not uh, maybe empress something <laughs> lady something <laughs> it was it was a struggle coming up uh, with my stage name and then um i went to my best friend i always go to her for everything when i need because she's very creative okay. i'm like i need a stage name and i was coming up with those empress this and that those funny names and she's like no you want something that really represents you and resonates with you and then we we started writing down a lot of names and then from Portia, she's like why not the last three letters of your name tia uh -huh. So T I A is like the last three letters of of Porsche, your name Porsche. of my real name. Okay, mm -hmm. if you can also get to tell us some of the names that you came up with uh, be <laughs> before uh, the actual name that you're now using. No, I don't want to go there. I was 18 years old, so you can imagine. I was, all right, all I right. was so young, so it was probably funny names like Funkylicious, Porsche. <laughs> oh, it's just crazy wild okay. names. Oh, those crazy names! <laughs> yeah. And uh, shout out to that friend of yours. Yes. Okay. Shout out to Johanna. <laughs> All right. Uh, nice. So, when did you started uh, doing music, and uh, what inspired you to get into the industry? In the in the, in the industry, mm -hmm. uh, that especially considering that uh, you are uh, a lady. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess uh, uh, your parents were like, uh, you're supposed to focus on your mm -hmm. schoolwork, on your books and stuff. Mm -hmm. This music thing, uh, mm -hmm. we don't want you to be doing this. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, uh, what inspired you to get into the industry and uh, when did you start it? 
Okay. So for me, it was just doing it for fun. I, I wasn't thinking like I'm getting in the industry. I was um, 17 years old when I wrote Boy You Got To Know. Okay. So firstly, I was 16 and I remember being in high school and we had this class called Education for Living where they focused on the creative side of the students. So the teacher gave us like different things to do. Another group was given like um, comedy skits to do, acting skits to do and then for us we had to come up with, our group had to come up with a song. So this girl came up with this beautiful song and it was just so mesmerizing like how does someone write a song I didn't know that somebody could just write a song I could just hear music uh, being on radio or whatever but you know that moment really intrigued me so on my way home um I came up with my first song and then I was like okay this is fun I was coming up with melodies writing this is fun and along the way a couple of months along the way I came up with boy you got to know and then I'd always had a dream of recording in the States. I'm like, I can't, I can't do this here. I can't do this here. I want to work with like big producers like Dark Child. And they are able to like bring that feel that I want. So um, I went to my cousin. He was already in the, in, in, in the music biz. He's like, you know what? I know what you like and what you're looking at. The only person that can give you that sound, the American sound that you want, is Fortune Parusa. And I was doubting. I was like, ah, I don't think so. He's like, trust me, just go and see this guy. Then got his contacts, called him, went to his house, and he's like, sing for me. And then I sing for him. It's like, yeah, we, we can do this. We can do this. And then I listened to some of the, the productions that he had done that he had unreleased. I'm like, okay, this guy is the guy he can do the magic he can do the magic (laughs) and then that's it that went in studio then um i recorded boy you got to know it took us six months to record that song because he was like a perfectionist so we would record up to like 2 a.m i'd be so tired i'll be with my brother my problem my brother would be sleeping on the on you know by then he was so tired on the couch on the couch because with with fortune he was so talented and he was like also a vocal coach so he would coach me vocally Uh and if i wasn't sounding right he would be like an hour we are doing like two lines recording them singing them recording them singing them then 2 a.m on some good days i'd go home like in the afternoon and then maybe after two months he's like i need you to take a break and don't listen to the song and then come back came back like weeks after got back in studio did it and we were done okay (laughs) six whole months six whole months that is what it took for you that is what it took so i recorded it at 17 i should think so okay and then i released it um six months into when I was 18. No, 18 is when I did the video, I think so. Okay. I don't quite... Yeah, uh, so let, let's talk about writing. How mm-hmm. long did it took for you to write the song before uh, getting into the studio? Before getting into the studio, it was so easy for me because I, I was a child. So when you're a child, uh-huh. you're just writing like... You, you're not deep into doing so <laughs> with okay. that song it didn't take me long i think it took me like a few days or yeah it didn't take me long okay yeah but when i got into studio um fortune is like no you need to like rewrite some of the verses you okay. know so the process of recording i had to like rewrite some of the verses okay mm-hmm. all right uh, nice. so was it your first uh, recording it was it was so well it was so painful imagine it being your first recording experience and then some days you're just like finishing at midnight 2 a.m by the time i finished the song i hated it okay hate is not is a very strong word <laughs> okay. i disliked the song by the time i released it i'm like and I, I don't like performing the song. I was just traumatized. So it's not my favorite song. I I know it's a lot of people's favorite song, but for me... Why, why, why is it not your favorite? It's not my favorite because of, you know, just the too much being in studio. Like, okay. I was too exposed to that song. And I just um, think my brain got tired of it. Okay. Yes. So that's just the main reason. 
Okay, so was it more like uh, a single or it was part of an album, mm-hmm. uh, maybe an EP or something? Well, what was it for you? It was a single. It was so a single. it was a single, then uh, Fortune did remixes of it, like different beats. Okay. And then I did a Shona version of it as well. For that same song. For that same song. But I, I've never had. You, yeah, I don't think I released it. Okay. I never put it out. Right. So can we can we put you on the spot? <laughs> can, can, can you do the shorter version <laughs> of the Jeff Ross live right here on the station? Let, um, let's go. Hopefully, I <laughs> I remember the lyrics. Um, uh, Makoma na iwe, dinara kuti we we ujinzwe. Hapana kana changa ndipe, kuti ini ndi kude. Makoma na iwe, daiwa si ana neni. Dinara kuto tambire kure, handi kudi wosaji furire. Okay, ah, uh, nice. <laughs> okay, so uh, that was uh, the the Shona version of uh, the gem. Okay. So it was shown throughout. All right. Mm-hmm. Ah, nice. Great. So who took the, the jam to uh, the radio stations? Boy, you got to know it was me and my auntie. Um, back then, it was still in Guero. Okay. Oh, I'm Park in space. Guero. Yeah. In Guero. Okay. So my auntie listened to the song. She loved it. She's like, oh, this is a great song. You know what? We can actually drive to Guero. <laughs> okay. So we drove to Guero. All the way. We got there. When uh-huh. we got there, they're like, this is not how we operate you can't just come with your song and uh-huh. then expect us to just play it you have to submit your song the board has to listen to it uh-huh. and it has to approve it all right and we're like but we drove all the way from harare, harare and Guel. we saw this young girl you know looking all sad innocent and all <laughs> exactly and then, <laughs> okay. and then i think it was the manager at the time they were like okay just give me a, um, a few minutes. Let me go talk to my people. They talk to their people. They listen to the radio. Who, who was the manager um, during that time? I don't remember. You can't remember? I don't remember. Okay. And they listened to it. They came back to me and they were like, oh, wow, we got to put this song on radio now. Can you do an interview? <laughs> okay. And then I got on radio. I did an interview and people were calling in crazy. It was like the phone was blowing up. Right. Um, the station's phone. Because uh-huh. everybody wanted to talk to me. They wanted to give their opinion it, on it. And they loved it. And it was. So do, do you remember the DJ was on air? Um, the time? At the time, I don't remember. I wish I did. And I actually had a recording of that interview, but I lost the tape. Has it? I think it was. I can't remember the DJ who I can't played your first song on radio. Can you believe that? And to think of it, it's, it's how could I? <laughs> how could I? I never thought how important until you just mentioned it now. Okay. Wow. All right. Uh, I'm sure he, please, if you do know yourself that you played my record for the first time, please holler at me so that I can always talk about you. All right. Uh, <laughs> nice. So how's the feeling? You being played on radio oh, for the first was, time? Okay. That was one thing that I really loved. Uh, uh-huh. It was just an exciting moment for me. I think what was more exciting was just people loving the song i just uh-huh. never thought that because i was nervous about it i didn't know if it would appeal to the audience okay so having people call in and talk about oh you sound like this artist oh you were so amazing we thought he wasn't from here that was like one of the greatest feelings ever for okay. Me. Uh, let's talk about your your parents. Were mm-hmm. they supportive? Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of your uh, your love for mm-hmm. the music, for mm-hmm. being in the indus- in the industry, mm-hmm. uh, how was the response like from my parents? They were very supportive, actually. Um, because my parents had always been like vibrant parents. They're not like backward and stuff okay. like that or those too, uptown y- parents yeah, yeah, exactly so you know they were in with the vibe and everything right. so they were very supportive uh-huh. I'm, I'm very lucky that I had such supportive parents unfortunately my mom is late okay. um, but my, my dad is alive and he's been like the biggest supporter of my music even uh-huh. when I give up and 
I feel like it's too much. He holds on to that dream for me. So I'm just one of those kids that has been fortunate enough to have um, their parents support their dreams, which uh -huh. not a lot of kids uh -huh. have. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, you told us uh, that your dad is also a manager, mm -hmm. is it? <laughs> he's, he's not my manager as such, uh -huh. but, you know, he just handles my stuff in, in, okay. in, in Zim. All right. Um, if you need to get in touch with him, you have to, uh -huh. you can go through him and then, you know, he will get at me. Okay, you, uh, all right. Uh, do, do you have a manager? Uh for now it's my <laughs> why are okay. you doing this to me i'm gonna seem like um <laughs> yeah Let, let's talk about it i'm my own boss so I'm, I'm like spice you know spice the jamaican artist she's like okay. her own manager like nowadays things are kind of uh -huh. yeah but me i do have my dad like handling all the um, all the administrative stuff for okay. me uh -huh. and then sometimes i do get to speak directly with people because nobody understands my dream and my vision as me uh -huh. and sometimes when you put yourself uh -huh. with your brand when you're entrusted into somebody else they don't represent you well and uh -huh. they don't take care of your brand as much as you can so i'm i think i'm the best representative uh -huh. of myself although it's always ideal for artists to always like have representatives but um some aspects of it uh -huh. i handle my business right, but, but, but why you, why you dead why not lt why, why, why not <laughs> do maybe? you want to be my manager yeah. send your resume <laughs> <laughs> no i think yeah. as a you know the creative industry is very um is very complex uh -huh. um especially for female artists so i think it's very important that you have a family member uh -huh. looking out for you because family has you at heart uh -huh. and unlike just having anybody represent from you the streets, from yeah. the streets yeah. it's very rare that you have people that have anybody representing from the streets and they actually have their best interests at heart and they're able to protect them uh -huh. from certain things so that's why you find a lot of artists always use family members, be it their parents, their cousins, to manage their work because uh -huh. family makes sure that you're protected, you're represented well. Uh -huh. um, yes. Okay, shout out to you. I recently checked out uh, the man Benna Boy from mm -hmm. uh, Nigeria. Mm -hmm. He also copied uh, the, that style as well. Uh, he's actually managed by his, his mother. Mom, uh, yes. Yeah. He, she'll be doing everything behind everything. the scenes for. And you can tell she's a tough mom. Like. Yeah, yeah. But it's, uh, things are happening for the man. Mm -hmm. He's one of the biggest artists uh, right in Africa. Right now. All right, so you said. Uh, a boy you got to know the the mm -hmm. audio uh came out uh came out uh which year 2003 2003 yes. and the video was in the year 2004 uh no it was in the same year like boy you got to know was beginning uh -huh. of 2003 uh -huh. the, the audio and then the video was at the end of the year okay can you take us through the video um the video as well i didn't want to do the video i was like i think the audio is enough okay um but my dad is like you know what people need to see uh -huh. because when people see something they're able to relate to it more visuals are you know what people really want uh -huh. so um i got introduced to marianne kunonga she's like a film director um, very talented she was doing movies and short films at the time i went to see her and i think i, I gelled with her very much because she was a female and the song was talking about boys and all of that so she could understand where i was coming uh -huh. from all right although she was slightly older than me um yeah so she came up with the concept and at the time i was just like oh okay um but i didn't understand like the depth of the concept like how good it was and how it really represented the the lyrics okay she of the song itself so that's how we came up to do the video i did it with her um and then we shot it at um what was the club called it was a very popular club i'm forgetting the name because okay I, yeah but but it is right here in uh in harare in harare it was in a the CBD. Straight, yeah it was a straight heaven okay yeah so straight heaven 
just uh, close to Maybury in Avondale. Circus. Uh-huh. It was a circus nightclub. Circus nightclub. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so the time. All right. And I. So how long did it took for you to shoot the video, mm-hmm. and uh, getting all the people who were part of the video? Mm-hmm. I checked out. Uh, there's Pauline of mm-hmm. the Mafreak fame on mm-hmm. the video, mm-hmm. and uh, there's the man. Tra- his name is Tonga Cherisa. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's been known as uh, Trevor Davis, I think, on uh, Studio Two Six Three. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how long did it took for you to get all things together, and uh, come up with that uh, world class video. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Thank you, world class. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, it took us a day to uh-huh. shoot the, the video. The video. It was like the whole day. Is and, it? Yes, the whole day. I didn't know anyone in that video. Like not one single person. Probably just my brother um, and a few friends. Not not and, even Pauline. Not even. Pa- by then, they were not on studio. Two six three, uh-huh. they were. I'm sure they were just aspiring to be musicians and all actors right, in their right. circles. Uh-huh. But um, at the time, they were just young kids that wanted to be um, in that industry. Okay. So I didn't know them, and it was all Marion's work. She did the the recruiting of all the people in the video. Uh-huh. Um, so I didn't know Tongai. All I know is... Uh, Don't say that. I'm so serious. <laughs> <laughs> so I was surprised when everyone became like uh-huh. famous. They started doing their own thing after the video. I'm like, oh, okay. Uh-huh. Um, that's good. Um, I didn't know Tongai, but I remember there were two guys uh-huh. that were cast for that role. Okay. And Marion was like, I need you to see these two guys and, and pick who you want to work with. Okay. And I wanted the other guy to be in the video. I wasn't convinced <laughs> with <laughs> Arnold. Okay. If I wasn't. So Marion had to fight with me. He's uh-huh. like, this guy will look good on camera and he can act. He's like the ideal for you. And then I was like, okay, I trust you. Let's just use him. If, yeah. if you can tell us why you are not convinced with uh, the main tone guy. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just liked the other guy uh, better. Okay. I just like the other guy. Better. Why? Why? Any specific reasons? Um, was he handsome? Good looking? <laughs> oh, I, okay. The other guy was, re- was more handsome than tone guy at, yeah, at the time. At, at the time, okay. At the time, yeah. So I wanted so, him. So, well, well, so well. Marion is like, you know, the thing with like really handsome guys is they don't look good on camera okay. in real life. So when we're doing film, we've noticed that certain features, <laughs> they look... <laughs> is that for real? <laughs> yeah, but it, it's true. It's like modeling. Uh-huh. You will find that some girls don't look really good in real life, but uh-huh. in picture, they've got like this exoticness look to them. So some uh-huh. people are just photogenic. Okay. And that happens with videos as well. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. Uh, so let's talk about uh, the story on the jam. Uh, is it more like uh, a real life uh, <laughs> story? Uh-huh. Yeah, maybe you were in a club, uh-huh. and then there's this other guy who came uh, who came mm-hmm. to you trying mm-hmm. to eat on you, and uh, the kind of thing. And you're like, uh, you're not my type, boy. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the concept. Uh, yeah, the that is. Yeah? That is the concept. Uh-huh. That is the concept. To be honest with you, I really write from personal experience. So for boy, you got to know it was nothing that um, had to do with my personal life it uh-huh. was just something that as a girl as a young girl uh-huh. at the time i think i was listening to too much of destiny's child okay so <laughs> so i think that kind of inspired the whole right. trend okay. um yeah, yeah. All right. But otherwise, it, it had nothing to do with the boy or boys that had neck okay. in the club. I, th- I thought it was a real life uh, story. People would love for that to have been. A <laughs> <laughs> but no, it wasn't. Did not. No. Okay. Uh, nice. So, you checking yourself for the first time on uh, television. Your mm-hmm. video is being played on TV. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you can also take us through that experience, mm-hmm. it's me coming out on TV. <laughs> it, it was exciting once again being uh-huh. on TV. Um, I remember taking my video to ZBC, uh-huh. um, and I submitted it, and then they 
reviewed it and they told me they're going to be playing it on such and such a date uh-huh. so i think it was just right after the news that they premiered it uh when they Is premiered it? yeah new videos and okay they, they, after the news at uh, eight. eight i think at the time i don't know if that program was there but i think they actually premiered the the video um I was so excited. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm on TV. <laughs> it, was, right, yeah. it was fun. Uh-huh. And then um, it, it was being played so much to the extent that I, whenever I played, I would have somebody call me like, I can see your video on. So it uh-huh. was fascinating that you can do something that really inspires people to the extent of... You know, you're not even making effort for that video to be played, but people just genuinely like it and they feel like it can be on their station. And uh-huh. there's so much request uh-huh. for it from the audience out there. Uh-huh. And then I did that. I sent it to Channel O. I uh-huh. sent it to Channel O. Um, I was... I was in South Africa at the time, so I actually delivered it. Uh-huh. I, I also wanted to ask you about mm-hmm. that, uh, mm-hmm. on how far true it is mm-hmm. that uh, the the video mm-hmm. also got some uh, good rotation mm-hmm. on, on, on Channel O. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, I took it to Channel O, and then after three weeks, they got back to me. There was an Indian guy at uh-huh. the time. Uh-huh. Um, he was the manager of the station. He called me. He's like... The, our stuff, like the whole of our stuff, was like super excited about your video. And guess what? We're gonna put it on the top playlist of okay. our of our rotation. Yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. And it's an amazing video. Like he just started fanning out on me. I I specifically remember that moment because I couldn't believe it. I'm uh-huh. a channel, and at the time there hadn't been any Zimbabwean playing on that channel. Playing on yeah. that channel. Uh-huh. And then, so it was like on heavy rotation. They played it so much on channel. And it was like, wow. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, crazy. Uh, mm-hmm. Nice. So, well, what did the song did for you? Maybe uh, make you know, talking about you making some monies. Mm-hmm. Maybe you built a house, mm-hmm. uh, you bought a car, mm-hmm. or something. Mm-hmm. Well, what did you manage to achieve as an artist through that song? Through that song, yeah. I was able to sell so many records um, of that because I signed with Grammar. At uh-huh. the time, it was Grammar... Um, Grammar Records. Grammar Records, uh-huh. like the distribution deal. All right. And they just didn't take anyone to uh-huh. distribute their music. Uh-huh. So it was an achievement for me mm-hmm. to actually be like the the, the, the the youngest person at the time to be uh-huh. signed by them. All right. And then... Um, you know, it was 18 years ago, so I don't uh-huh. quite remember a lot of things that I was able to do, but it really did a lot for me financially because it helped me. Um, it helped to build a strong brand for myself, and I was now able to use my name uh-huh. and my brand that had been created by Boy You Got To Know to I was able to use it as leverage to attract investment, uh-huh. um, like even corporate sponsorships. Uh-huh. Um, I would have companies that wanted to partner with me to advertise something or to perform for a private function for them. Uh-huh. So I got so many endorsements um, from that, from Boy You Got To Know. So uh-huh. in terms of financial aspect of it I partnered with corporates and they gave me a lot of money I think the most I got from a company at the time in 2000 and what even three years after it was released uh-huh. I got uh, 10 10,000 US dollars that was the biggest Ten? amount 10 th- and I and I'm not talking like the, the, <laughs> the currency that was at the time I okay. got, I got I'm, I'm sure I cannot mention the company on it okay yeah but yeah but i got it was like a a telecommunications one of the big one of the biggest telecommunications company in the country in the country yes okay and then yeah they they i I partnered with them and then they gave me um that much so when i when i look back and when i hear of how the industry has changed um in terms of what the kind of revenue that artists are getting from some of these endorsements. I'm like, so 
I was very fortunate that I got that much because apparently nowadays people don't get as much as uh, they you used to. Get, yeah. they, they don't get as much as I, I, I got at that time. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, so we're going to take a short musical break and uh, we're coming back after this jam right here. If you can introduce the song for us. Okay. Well, this next song is my latest single. It was released like. No, li- listen, listen to this one. Listen. Oh. <laughs> is that okay. the one you're playing? I yeah. you no, you guys, you need to get uh. over my old stuff. You can't do that to me. Okay. You need to, like. D- don't worry. Okay, so this one is Come a Little Closer. Uh-huh. By Tia, uh-huh. by yours truly. Um, it's a love song, right? Very sentimental vibes. It was uh, recorded with the late TBA. Okay. Um, rest in peace. It was like an exciting moment. It's part of an album called Spice It Up. All right. And um, it was it was one of those exciting moments I had working with TBA. W- which year was it? It was in two thousand and. Eight or nine. That was an eight or nine. Yes, eight or nine. All right, nice. So let's go check out uh, the track. Hey, you're dressed in summer clothes. Your eyes are setting vibes. Almost getting me weak inside. Can't you see that I want you, baby? Can't you see that you're driving me crazy? Can't you see that I want you, baby? Can't you see that you're driving me crazy? Come a little closer to me. Sorry's are the jam turtle dark come a little closer coming through from my tear and um uh, <laughs> I'm joined by hair right here at the studio. And if you want to check out it is on our Facebook page. Uh, you can actually get to check us out on our Facebook page, uh, which is uh, Power FM Zimbabwe. Go to go to our Facebook page right now and get to check out uh, the live streaming. So I'm gonna be coming back after these messages. Dance the night away Only with you, my baby The way you hold me can't explain But I can feel it, you're the one Come a little closer to me now you Said I wanna feel your lips to mine Can we take a ride to the dance floor? Said I wanna feel you touch my thighs Come a little closer to me now you Said I wanna feel your lips to mine Come a little closer to me Chiba 
So I still logged on to the after drive on a Tuesday at 7.45. It is your time. And uh, the name is LT Slim Daddy Cars now for you. And is the segment Where Are They Now? And uh, tonight I'm joined by none other than uh, the beautiful lady right here in the studio. Her name is Tia. Shout out to you, Tia, Tia, Tia. Thank you. Shout out to you too. <laughs> okay. Uh, nice. So let's talk about uh, Tia after the boy you got to know, mm-hmm. Jem. Uh, what happened? How many albums do you have inside mm-hmm. your name? Uh, is it singles? Mm-hmm. Is it uh, EPLs? Mm-hmm. I would want to know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's been two albums and a lot of singles. Okay. Uh-huh. The, the first so, album? The first album is called Spice It Up uh-huh. and the other album is called Euphoria. So Euphoria was like a Spice It Up um, just had different genres going on in there. And then Euphoria was like basically a dance album. Okay. Yes. And then there were like a couple of singles on, on that just came on their own. Um, one of the songs was called Forget the Bills. Um it was produced by a guy called T. Cola. He's a Zimbabwean guy, but he's based in the States now. And he's produced uh, some tracks for Chris Brown and Rita Ora. Oh, um, is it? Yeah, it was on GTL Top 10 here in Zim. There was a time that there was GTL Top 10 here. Okay, right here on the station. You right okay. here on the station. Uh-huh. And it was in the Top 10 and it did well in the Top 10. And then there were other tracks like Give me, give me love, which uh-huh. had a house feel to them. Uh-huh. Um, I received so much airplay on Kaya FM in in South Africa, and then I did um, two more videos, which were played on Channel O and on MTV. Um, yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. So basically, Tia has two albums mm-hmm. in her name. On my name, yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, nice, uh, nice, 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 nice. Oh, seven one two, eight three one one seven two. That is uh, the WhatsApp platform number. If you want to ask uh, some a couple of questions uh, to the lady that I have right here in the studio, her name is Tia, of uh, the boy you got to know fame. So let's talk about uh, life now. What is happening with uh, Tia? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I used to uh, <laughs> do music or maybe you now doing some other things. I'm still doing music. Um, as I mentioned before, uh-huh. I've been recording. So uh-huh. I've uh-huh. been recording. I, I do have an EP coming out soon in October, hopefully. Uh-huh. Um, and off that EP, I've already released like two tracks called I Believe and Tonight. Uh-huh. Um, so it's the music and my charity foundation. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So those two things. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And uh, what's your comment uh, to those people actually get to say that uh, Tia is a one-hit wonder artist? <laughs> because I like to believe uh, quite so many people, uh, they only know, mm-hmm. perhaps they know, they, they just know the gem boy you got to know yes. from you. Yes. Uh, and, and and a couple of others, surprisingly, they know the song come a little closer. Uh-huh. Um, I've never really thought about it, hey? Uh-huh. I've never really thought about it. Like, if people want to view it that way, uh-huh. then it's it's still fine by me because I've... I look at the dynamics of the country, how things shifted musically uh-huh. and how that affected a lot of artists, especially artists of my era. Uh-huh. So I can understand where they're even coming from okay. saying that because I haven't been consistent because of the 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 the, 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 the dynamics of the industry because I also have to see... Um, I have to weigh uh-huh. my options. Like, is it viable to um, continue doing what I want to do 
when when like there's a certain genre that's like hyping our people at the moment uh-huh. and also being able to still work on material releasing it and then it being overshadowed by a certain genre that it's more appealing to people so people have no access to my music so uh-huh, uh-huh. it's basically not their fault for them thinking like that so do, do you think it's all about that particular genre that you're talking about or perhaps it's you uh, not moving with time mm-hmm. with other trends mm-hmm. when it comes to I know that music moves with time mm-hmm. music That's is dynamic true. yeah That's so true. is it because of that particular genre or is you because <laughs> <laughs> I'd I like to understand mm-hmm. uh, people like uh, XQ. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think isn't he from your era? He is. He is. But he's still relevant mm-hmm. up to to date. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Why not do the same? Well, what's going on? With people like him, they've probably studied the industry and they sort of like come a flush uh-huh. into the industry or. Um, are able to like twist things up so that they are able to still remain relevant and like for me I'm very loyal to my brand and what it represents because it has made me to have to be who I I am I'm not going to compromise Uh my R&B pop sound of course I'm going to go with the trends but I'm not going to like now start singing dance hall or gospel Uh or whatever is in at the moment just so I could I could fit in uh-huh. because I can tell you I've been recording and I have a lot of tracks that are there, but people just don't have access to them because uh-huh. there is a more trendy or there is a, a preferential sound uh-huh. that is there at the moment that the gatekeepers of the industry are promoting. Uh-huh. Therefore, we artists like us will be overshadowed and it happens with many industries okay be it in america right now i mean diddy posted that r&b's did and a lot of artists came um after him they're like no R&B, yeah, yeah r&b is not dead uh-huh. well, it depends who are you listening to we have so many r&b artists it's just that these artists are not being promoted because nowadays it's no longer about the music it's, it's about um, selling clothes, selling image. Um, you know, it's like a whole package nowadays. So if companies want to promote something, they're going to promote music that represents that. If there's a, a um, gatekeepers or industry executive that they've got an idea that they want to push, they're going to do it. And, and it's most... It, it works well with certain music, okay. but otherwise, the, we as the artists, there is enough of us doing the R&B music, but of course it will always be overshadowed by the, the, by the other trends that are there now. Okay, mm-hmm. so, so do you think uh, you, by any chance, going to do a song or a jam which is going to be as big as Bo you got to know um i always feel like sometimes you can never exceed a first impression uh-huh. b- because it's something that's just naturally built like that you can try but everybody has got that one song that they have done that no matter what they do they can have great records uh-huh. that will be whatever but they could never surpass their like the the first song that got people to like them so i believe that i may not be able to surpass the kind of impact that boy boy you got to know had because it is just up to now i'm I'm shocked that people still love that sound and very much so excited and i'm thinking guys you gotta be over this but they're still holding on to it i mean <laughs> i wouldn't have to even release anything else and just sing that song and people would be satisfied with it i mean the song itself it does so much for me than even someone new coming up and you know um doing something but i believe that i still have room to do great music that Uh will at the right time 
uh-huh. they will have a huge impact but maybe not now uh-huh. but it will happen that I'll have at the bigger records Okay. Other bigger records. All right, John. Nice. So I've got a question right here coming through from my listener. Mm-hmm. And the question is Is Tia taken? I don't answer such questions. <laughs> <laughs> I Why? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Why? I Why? just never talk about that. Okay. <laughs> and uh, it seems like we are now in the controversial set of things. LT, you want to know about uh, her fight with uh, Madiwa that <laughs> escalated to Madiwa uh, releasing a music video. As you know, what is Tia with Tia? I never had a fight with him. Hey, um, I just know that he had a, a, a video and a song. Talking that- about you talking about I, I guess he was triggered by the lyrics boy you got to know so he felt like doing a reply to it okay um, whether it was directed to me or not I have no clue but I remember when people actually posted about this um, he responded in the comments like you were hype you were popular at the time and I was just trying to get in the game but it was nothing Okay. to you. All right, uh, nice LT Tiano Gonesa. Any type of music, Agega. Got to play music. Anya Ramazvano. It is a Yele in Mutari. That's where this person is. Shout out to you. Much love to you. Uh, Tia has a beautiful angelic voice. Is she married? Uh, mm. It seems like this question <laughs> is... <laughs> no, I'm not married. I don't have kids. Okay. Yeah, that, will, that I will answer. I don't have kids and I'm not married. All right. Uh, <laughs> 024-249-865254. If you want to talk to Tia right here in the studio, you got to hit me up right now. I get to talk to her live on air. It is uh, four minutes away from the news at Eight. That's your time. The after drive. The LT Slim Daddy cars now for you. Zero two four two four nine eight six five two and five four. If you want to talk to Tia. Point them. Okay. Seems like we've lost our caller right there. Zero two four two four nine eight six five two and five four. Point them. Hello. 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 I'm right. Uh, how are you doing yourself? I'm fine. I'm connecting to my new Alice from. From okay, do you want to talk to Tia? Yes. Okay, you can go ahead. Hi, Tia. Hi, Tino Tenda. How are you? I'm fine. I like your music. Thank you so much, and thank you for I calling like all the music. way from... I'm not quiet. I actually do have new music. Um, wow. You can follow me on Miss Tia Official on oh. Facebook, on Instagram, on TikTok. And on SoundCloud, and then you know you're able to see f- um, updates and feedback of what I'm doing, where I'm at, and the kind of music that I'm putting right. out. Right. But wow. I do have wow. new right. music. Thank you so much for the love and support. All right, all right. I heard that you, yeah, yeah, you don't have kids. You're not married, and I'm searching. <laughs> 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 no, I'm not searching any. I'm sorry. Okay, okay, so it's bad. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you so much. I like you. I I like your music for you. Thank you so much. Be sure to follow me on social media. All right, uh, seems like uh, he's <laughs> gone. <laughs> <laughs> four nine eight six five ten five four uh zero two four two being the code for that if you want to talk to tia right here in the studio uh, let's get to check out who we have right here point fm okay it seems like uh, the lines are so busy a uh, point fm hello? hello hi hello how are you i'm right uh, who am i talking to and i can go ahead and talk to tia yeah, Okay, go ahead and uh, speak to Tia. Hi. Yeah, how are you? I'm doing fine. How are you? Well, I'm great. Sorry. I just want to comment your voice of all the things, of all your music. I think your voice is such a blessing, you know. Thank you so much. I always voice a song like before the voices that I've heard, uh-huh. you know, I like this show, you know, the voice and the 
Okay. No, yeah. thank you for believing in me so much. And I hope you continue supporting. Please follow me on social media so that we can connect and you can hear my new music. And um, you will enjoy because it's great music. All right, uh, let's go check out uh, the other caller right here. A point for him. Hello, uh, if you can try to speak up, who are we talking to? It's my name, Tia. Okay, go ahead uh, and speak to Tia. Okay, hi Tia. Hi girl, how are you doing? I really like your music. Oh, oh it's so good. Oh no. She's gone. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, nice so, lady. <laughs> uh, right, so we're going to cross over to the news and uh, get to see if we can uh, just take a few more calls. Yeah. And it's Paul FM of the Zimbabwe Broadcasting Corporation. Time check is 8 p.m. now on top of the news.